whenever he shows up, I'm going to teach it. I think he installed the black door. Paul, I think that guy passed away too, Paul. Good afternoon. We're ready to begin with the pre service selections. Please join us first of all for blessed assurance. Please join us for the next free service selection. Christ is not here.
Library Service Selection from the city, from the country. Welcome, everyone. Come on. Welcome to all of you. It's good to have Chuck Thiel and the Jolly Ramblers with us tonight as we celebrate Reformation. Um, I have a number of announcements. I'm going to save those to the end. Uh, but let's begin tonight with prayer and get right back into singing. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have gathered us in your place. And now, Lord, as we gather right here, your house, your presence, we pray that you'd come and be at work among us, meeting our needs, empowering us, sending us out to go out and, and be used by you to meet the needs of those around us. Work that in us as we worship. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join us for the gathering song. We come together.
Our worship begins the way our lives begin in Christ and baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Word of God announces both his punishment and his pardon, his judgment and his grace. The law of God, summarized in the Ten Commandments, reminds us of our continual need for the Lord's forgiveness. As we gather for worship, let us first pray to the Lord, confessing our sins to him and calling upon him to have mercy upon us. With humble hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, your word of truth confronts us in our sin. It convicts us of the bad things we have thought, said, and done and of the good things we have failed to think, say, and do. Forgive our sins against you and our sins against one another. Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us. By the power of his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave, reunite our lives to your life. Equip us by your Holy Spirit to love and to serve others, as you have first loved and served us. Amen. Jesus says to each of us, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Friends in Christ, let us abide in Jesus' word, which brings us the freedom of his forgiveness. And it's my joy and privilege as a called and ordained servant of the word to stand in his stead and speak the words he commands me to speak. All of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's people say, Amen. So if the Son sets you free, you are free, free indeed. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the preaching of your servants, the Reformers, you made the light of the gospel shine clearly. Grant that we may know its saving power, faithfully defend it against all enemies, and joyfully proclaim it for the salvation of people and the glory of your name. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please take a moment. Greet those around you.
The first lesson is from the 14th chapter of Revelation. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. The word of the Lord. The epistle lessons from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. Where then is boasting? It is excluded because of what law? The law that requires works? No, because the law that requires faith. For we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. The word of the Lord. The psalm of the day is Psalm 46, and we'll read it responsibly. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear. Though its waters roar and foam, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God is within her. She will not fall. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He, he breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 8. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. You be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, the church staff knows, and some of you no doubt know, that I don't do well when I'm bored. Um, I tend to get grouchy and irritable when there's not enough going on. And I don't know if this is a, a character flaw or just a personality quirk, but I really would prefer to have too much going on rather than not enough going on. And so I, I remember this one weekend, I was in my garage, uh, just kind of puttering around, and I was listening to public radio, and I heard an interesting trivia fact, uh, it, and it said that the words bored and boredom didn't appear in any language until the late 1700s when they were coined in English. And, and I, when I heard that, I immediately worked in, into a sermon the next day and I'm bringing it up again tonight because it fits with what I'm talking about. It was for, it's people live for centuries without a word for bored or boredom or boring. And I was left to wonder why that was. Um, and I, was, I had to assume then at that point that boredom was just not a reality for most people up until that point. Maybe they were too busy to be bored. Maybe they just cherished the few times they had to do nothing 
except sit and think. And if, if you've been a parent, you've no doubt heard these words, I am so bored, right? You, you've probably said it yourself. Um, what do you do when you have nothing to do? Do you turn on the TV? Do you open the refrigerator? Do you complain? Um, I, I know I'm not the only one this affects. I, my first church, Zion Lutheran in Princeton, I had, a, I had a lady there who I just came to love dearly. I mean, I, I really cherished this lady, but it didn't start out that way. Um, before, just a few months before I came to Zion in Princeton, her husband had died. And about 10 years before that, he had had a severe stroke that left him unable to care for himself. And so she had spent the last 10 years being the caregiver to her husband. And then shortly before I got there, he passed away. Now she's got all of this time on her hands and all of this energy. And I think her favorite way to use it was to come to my office every Monday morning and find something to complain about. And I I didn't, as a young pastor, it took me a little while to figure out uh, she was just bored. She needed something to do. And I, and I knew that there was a young, young lady in our congregation who had a video camera, and she had offered to videotape the services. Back, you know, when you, put the, you had the big videotape that you stuck in the camera. And, and so I, I, I asked this lady, the lady that was coming to my office every Monday, I said, if I could find someone to, to record the services, would you be willing to take it down to the Elam home? That was the nursing home in Princeton. We had four or five people that, that four or five church members that lived there. And I said, would you show them the video every Monday morning? And she said, sure, I, she would love to do that. And so we got the service recorded and she start, got picked up the tape and arranged a room at the nursing home. And pretty soon a lot of other people wanted to start coming. And it was up to, got up to 20 people and 30 people that wanted to come and watch the video. And so we had, they had to give her a bigger room and she had to start getting there two hours early to make sure she could get everyone there who wanted to be there, and then she had to stick around two hours later to make sure to get everybody to lunch or wherever they needed to go next. And most importantly, she quit coming to my office every Monday morning to complain. (laughs) She found a good use of her time and her energy and a great outlet for boredom. What do you do when you're bored? Have we become slaves of activity, slaves of entertainment? We have to have something going on. Jesus said in our gospel reading, if you abide in my teaching, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I wonder if our slavery to activity and slavery to entertainment, slavery to need, having to have something going on all the time has taken away our ability to just sit and think, to really spend time reflecting, abiding in, the, in Jesus, thinking about who he is, reflecting on, on his teaching, doing what he says in this text. If you abide in my teaching, you are really my disciples. Have we lost that ability to just sit and abide with Jesus? Um, I remember Hilda Ebert um, telling me that her husband Harvey would say, People need to spend more time stump sitting. What he meant by that was we need to spend more time just sitting and thinking, and and that's a much better way to solve our problems than just go, go, go. Um, We solve our problems better and order our lives better if we would just learn to stop and think and reflect and pray and do all those passive things that are part of abiding in Jesus' teaching. You know, ever since... uh, Well, ever since the dawn of history, ever since the creation of people, we've been on a quest. It seems a never-ending quest for the truth. Um, I I shared with you (coughs) last week, I'll share again this week, our our district president, Dr. Lucas Woodford, is really getting tired of all the bickering. It's not between churches, it's between pastors that think, you know, this guy over here is doing it the wrong way because he's not doing it like me, and this guy over here is doing it the wrong way, and... Somebody really needs to go and talk to him and tell him he's got to do things the right way. And I think President Woodford had enough, and so he picked the four big topics that we disagree on, and he's had these convocations. And the idea, you know, he tells us, the idea is we want to, we want to know what's the truth, and then what are, our, what, are the, what are convictions that don't bind us, and what are the preferences 
And so that's what we've been doing for, for several weeks now. We had the last one yesterday in Fulda. And I, I like to think we made progress, but I'm, I'm not sure we did. You know, we, we have to spend time sitting and thinking and reflecting. And what I saw yesterday was, you know, the different pastors would talk. And one guy's up there talking, and you can see the people who disagree with them are just, they're, they're not even listening anymore. They're just so anxious to give their rebuttal that they don't even listen to what the guy has to say. You know, we, we have to, we want truth. You, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And that means we got to reflect. We have to abide. We have to sit and reflect and think. Um, go back, all the way back to the Garden of Eden. You know, um, Eve took the apple because Satan challenged her interpretation of the truth. God, did God really say, if you eat from this fruit, you will die? He challenged her interpretation of truth. She faltered. She found out that the, 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 the hardship of what non-truth does. Okay, so it's important that we abide in the teachings of Jesus and know the truth and the truth sets us free. And this, uh, this last Sunday of October, this Reformation weekend, it's important that we stop and think. This, this is the time we set aside to remember what God did through the work and the writings of a Catholic monk named Martin Luther, who searched to know what was true is what sparked the, the Reformation that became known as the Lutheran Reformation and spawned what would become known as the Lutheran Church. And this had been bubbling under the surface in Europe before Luther. People like John Huss had tried to get the, the Bible, the truth, into the hands of people in their own language. And the, it was, the Bible was only available in Latin, and only the priest could read Latin. And so when he tried to do this, there was a, you know, an outcry from the authorities in the church. And they burned the, the translations, and they imprisoned and even executed the people who were translating the Bible into the common language. And along came Luther, and he translated the Bible into common German so every home could have it, and every father could sit at home and teach his kids the, the truth of God's word. And, uh, and, you know, he paid the price for that. I'll come back and talk about that in just a minute. But this is what he wanted was people to have the truth, the truth that comes from God's word, the truth that comes from abiding in the teachings of Jesus. You know, science and technology have given us a lot. And I, I don't want to downplay that at all. You know, uh, science, science has given us great medical breakthroughs that have improved our lives and extended our lives and given us the, the gift of healing. Technology has done things, you know, to make our, to make our world a much safer, better place. And yet this truth that sets us free continues to elude a lot of people. The truth that set Luther free, the truth that set us free, this awesome reality of the, the perfect life and the innocent death of Jesus is what sets us free. It's the fact that God loves us unconditionally. God forgives us completely. That's the truth that sets us free. And it, it doesn't set us free from trials and from hardships. You know, Luther's the, the example of that. As soon as he started teaching this, he, they, he had, they not only excommunicated him, they wanted to kill him for this truth that sets people free. And so on the one hand, Martin Luther discovered grace, but he also got a lot of trials. But it was that truth that sets him free and sets us free that accompanied him and accompanied us through the trials. Life isn't going to get any easier because we know the truth, but that truth accompanies us through the trials. And so this is why... Every Sunday, I tell you, or every weekend, I tell you, when Pastor B's here, he tells you that we need to be in the Word. We need to be people of the Word. We need to be reading the Bible. We need to be sitting and thinking about the Bible. That's, the, that's what Jesus means when he says abide. It gets translated remain, or um, there was another translation we read, hold to my teaching. Um, and, and that comes from just sitting and soaking in what Jesus has said and reflecting on what Jesus has said. That's why I, I want all of you be, to be doing the five things to pray for your city. Every day, there's something from the Word. Every day, there's a prayer. It's that, that, and it, gives us, it, it gives us that discipline to stop and read and reflect and pray. And that, that's abiding in Jesus. And that's, it's that truth that sets us free. Um, so 
As we wrap up Reformation weekend, I want you to spend time sitting and reflecting on the Word of God. And it's that truth that sets you free. Amen and amen. Something different today. We are going to sing the creed, and so I invite you to rise. Seated. We have a number of things in our prayers tonight. Um, you see on the, the prayer sheet there that Jerry Kaisas, that Scott Kaisas' father, passed away this week. We'll keep the Kaisas family in our prayers. Carol Heinrichs, many of you who have been around a while know, remember Carol. Carol passed away Thursday. Her funeral will be Tuesday at St. Matthew at 11 o'clock. Um, just an interesting thing about Carol. Carol, you know, was born with a, um, a deformity in her, in her head, in her brain, and her family was told that she wouldn't live through childhood, and uh, she died at 84 years old on Thursday, so she made it quite a ways past childhood. Um, and then some of you will remember Harold Wagner. Harold and his wife were members here, 
and Harold went up, left for seminary and became a pastor and served a number of churches, most recently Family of Christ in Andover. Harold passed away, Pastor Wagner passed away. His funeral will be Saturday at 11 o'clock, not here. It'll be at Family of Christ in Ham Lake. <clears throat> also, we want to keep um, Elroy Hunnell in our prayers. He is hospitalized. Um, Pastor B will be having treatment for his cancer, and it'll be a um, treatment with medicine before any surgery is done. We're going to try medicine. It has the risk of some bad side effects. We're going to pray that God protects him from the side effects. And then uh, a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, so let me find the, get the name right. Sophia Scutt uh, was born to Zach and Katie Blaze Scutt on Thursday night, so Bruce and Carol's third grandchild, and we thank God for that. I have a great, Carol said a great picture of Bruce holding Sophia, but I don't have a way to share that with you, so if you'd like to see it, she'll see me after church. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the truth that sets us free. Thank you that we're set free from sin, we're set free from death, we're set free from the punishment of our sin, and, and we have that freedom of knowing that you are with us in all that we do. Give us discipline, Lord, and diligence to abide in you, just to sit and reflect, and be in your word, and be in prayer, so that that truth, that truth continues to set us free. We pray this for ourselves as individuals. We pray as St. Matthew Lutheran Church that we will be a church that is in your word and as a church set free by truth. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all of those who have been touched by death this week. We pray for Scott Kyseth and his family. We pray for Jim Hendricks and all of Carol's relatives and friends. We pray for the family and friends of Pastor Pastor Wagner, we pray for all of these, Lord, that you would comfort them with the hope of the resurrection. Surround them with those who will bring your strength and your encouragement and bring, be for them resurrection and life. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we pray for those who await your healing. We pray for Elroy as he is hospitalized. We pray for Pastor B as he undergoes treatment. We pray for those that we name silently before you. Touch each of these, Lord, with your healing grace. We, we pray specifically that uh, the side effects of the medicine Pastor B takes would be tolerable and that that medicine would bring about healing from his cancer. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Father, we rejoice today with Zach and Katie and with Bruce and Carol at the birth of Sophia. And we pray that you protect that young life and bring her soon into your family through the waters of baptism. Give to Zach and Katie all they need to bring Sophia and Will both up in a vibrant, growing relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for other churches in our community. Today, we pray for Church of All Nations and Pastor Jen Kim. We pray that you bless them as people and pastor. We pray that they would have the truth that sets them free. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we thank you for the, the gifts the musical gifts of Chuck Thiel and the Jolly Ramblers and their leading worship tonight. We pray that you would continue to protect them as they travel, allow them to use their gifts in a fruitful way that bless you and grow the kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. We ask all of these things knowing that you hear them, for we ask them in the name of Jesus. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. 
When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Those of you taking communion in your pew, take and eat the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. We will commune the musicians first, and then the rest of you are invited forward.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen us and preserve us in true faith, the life everlasting. Serve the Lord in peace. Amen. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we do thank you that you have given us pardon and peace in the Lord's Supper, the truth that sets us free. And we pray as we go out, Lord, we go out and use our freedom to love you with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I encourage you to be in the book, Five Things to Pray for this, Your City. There's a Bible reading every every day. This week, all of the verses have been about care and caregivers and caretakers in the city. Bob Nearing is going to do our prayer for the city. Let us pray. Dear Lord, tonight as we pray for our city, we pray for its care. There are many in Columbia Heights who are hurting. Your love for us never ends and you equip us to care for others. We are told to love our neighbors as ourselves. In response to that command, help us to grow our love and compassion for those around us. Thank you, Lord, for those first responders in Columbia Heights who sacrifice so much as they serve others in times of emergency. Sustain them as they tend to the physical, mental, and spiritual needs of people in times of distress. But caring goes beyond times of emergency and includes the daily activities of life which involves family members, friends, aides, social workers, therapists, nurses, and doctors. We pray for all who are willing to be involved in the complexities of lives of those around us. Be with us as we do these things in response to your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been great to have you guys with us tonight. Um, you have some CDs for sale. Are you still doing that? Yeah. All right. All right. Can people buy them if they, if they want them? Or? Um, we'll have them up next year for sure. Okay. And he's got his son's concert, so. Oh, you've got to get going. All right. One, one quick suggestion. Um, I'll, I'll make it down here. When you do that, that, that Willie Nelson tune, that first communion song that we did, I think you should have a red, white, and blue bandana for Chuck to wear, so he looks a little bit more yeah, like Willie Nelson. Oh, no? Okay. All right. Nice try. Uh, could just a couple of quick announcements. Um, next Saturday morning, we have a, uh, a church cleanup day outdoors, uh, raking and just cleaning up the yard a bit, so feel free to join us for that. Um, also, this doesn't affect you so much, but just remember after church next Saturday when you go home, set your clocks back an hour and, and take advantage of that extra hour of sleep. And then November the 17th, um, that's a Sunday, we'll have our annual voters meeting. We set the budget, elect new officers. So plan to stick around for a little while after the 10 o'clock service on Sunday for voters meeting. And Let's, year, yes. Next year will be Sunday. Right. Second. Yep, so they'll be here instead of Reformation, they'll be here all saints. All right, let's rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God's people say,